this is the importance of looking for these parts. This becomes the intro, okay? And what is all of this? In 1996, for instance, so if we look at our list of transitions, this is a, this is this in, in such and such a year, so this is a, this is a transition signaling a sequence of dates and events, although we don't have any others, then for instance, that's why one of the things I stuck this on is gives us an example. Okay. Is there any other example? Remember, we kind of decided that it didn't give us more than one study. So this is just. part just discusses this one study that they're talking about. Yeah, so again, the only sentence that is left is number three. Anybody get anything different from three there? I think seven. Seven? Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, people find it hard to give up. Um, does this, if you say here that the full moon doesn't really, I'm kind of paraphrasing everybody. According to studies. Then again, now you have to come back to this question. Does this say the same thing as that? That's, yeah, see that's the check that people are missing. So that's what we have to do. Yeah, so, it, so this doesn't really work. Although I think, you're right, I think it's the only other sentence that even comes remotely close, okay? Um, what, what we kind of have to do here, and like I was just talking about with 302, what you're going to be asked to do in 302 is, you know, exactly this. You're going to have to state a main idea, look for a topic sentence, and this really is, three is the closest, really, um, but this really is what's kind of called an implied main idea in which case you have to add something to this. Mm -hmm. Studies of the full moon effect have never supported these false beliefs. So in a sense, you kind of have to put three and seven together. But they're, they're ingrained in people's minds. Okay. So you could almost say, you have to kind of put those two together. Does that make sense? Three and seven or three and and um, three and one. Three and one or three and two. Because that that's what's missing is the such parts. Okay. So yeah, so this is a tricky one. That sentence is the closest, but it's not, by itself it's not ideal. Okay. Oops. Oh, that's the vocabulary. I think I made, I haven't been talking about these vocabulary quizzes, but I have to say I probably do more writing, this was just up here, I probably do more writing on these than I do even on your and my exercises. So if you did get something wrong, I think I pretty much made a note. So if you have a question about that, ask me, but I usually don't spend time screwing over this. Okay. Um, so this one is another short one where you have two kind of reversal phrases, okay? I 
don't know whether these are on. Oh, yeah. So we have this word, which means what? What does contrary mean? If you go contrary to what somebody else says, are, do you agree with them? No. no. You're going against them. Okay. So this starts out with contrary. Americans did not invent baseball. So if we just look at this, what does it look like the rest of the paragraph is going to tell us? Even just looking at this. Yeah. Is this going to tell us? Okay, so our question is, who did? Right? Does it answer that question? Kind of. As an English game called Rounders, the pastime had existed since the 17th century. So is this going to go ahead and tell us the history of rounders? No. Because here's another. So this kind of is tricky. It's got one a reversal thing here and then another one here. So what is the topic? What is repeated? Baseball. Yeah, baseball. And you could say this is a reference to baseball. What else? What's the second thing? Because baseball in general is too broad. It doesn't tell us the whole history of it, the whole how to play it, who all the players are. Baseball and pastime. Pastime? OK. Baseball as a pastime. But what else do you, what else am I, where's my highlighter? Yeah. They, okay, New York, Americans, all right, and professional clubs, that could have referred to American professional clubs. I would say, what is it telling me about, and again, even if, if you just put this, that's fine, as long as you come back to the other part in this. That's like the ones we look at here. Robert Ballard and his discoveries were only because that person came back to the Titanic as the most important discovery. So what is it telling us about baseball? Brad? OK, but is that, can I write, just write that down here? Does that work? No, that's not a complete sentence. So what's the answer to that? Americans did not invent baseball. Okay, Americans did not invent baseball. Anything else? Okay, Daniel. They, they turned it into a professional okay. sport. Yeah. But they made it professional. Or, you know, try to, again, try to um, <laughs> paraphrase. Don't just copy. Because sometimes there's just no other way to say it. But, uh, you know, we get back into that business of dependence on foreign oil, where I'm not sure people really understand what that means. Yes. Start with the reversal transition, if you have one. This is kind of a reversal thing. They didn't invent baseball in Cooperstown, New York in 1839, okay? But that doesn't have this part. 
It was started as an English game called Rounders. But if they didn't create it, they unquestionably come in the professional sport. Yeah. So that's more straightforward than some of these other ones. Anybody put anything different? What's your list here? Do you see a list? This is, yeah, this is a list of years, okay? So we have um, 1845, first team. What does this mean? In the 1860s, Americans codified the rules. And I notice some of you are doing this, which is good. I think they teach you this down in the lab, in the strategies. When you see a word that is hyphenated, that has the hyphen here, write it out, write the whole thing out. That'll help you see what it is. A lot of times we see this and we see this and you're just like, what is that? If you write it out, what does that mean, codify? Me, like me, making the rules, setting Good, the rules. okay, yeah. It, it, what, it, what it means, it's from the word code in the sense of like a code of conduct. A code of conduct is the rules, okay? So it has the idea of it codified it, meaning it gave it rules, okay? So they gave the rules. And then what's this stuff? Overhand pitches, replaced underhanded tosses. What, what is that sentence? What purpose does that sentence serve? How they codified it. Yeah, this, the overhand pitches replacing underhand tosses. So this rather than this. That's an example of how they made rules. You can no longer do this. You have to do this. Okay. Yeah, this, it, what, even once we got this, the rest of this stuff, you know, if you're in a, in a sports history class, I don't know whether there are such things, but you're going to have to say, what did Americans do to baseball? How did they professionalize it? Okay, so you're going to have to understand what this means. What does it mean they codified it? Okay, what is this sentence doing in here? What is it telling us? Okay, in the same decade, they organized the professional clubs and began to charge admission. So these go out here. charge money. Okay, so th that's a list of what? What is that a list of? They've, they've got the first team, the first organized team, they set up the rules, they organized baseball clubs, and they started to charge money. What's that a list of? Yeah, this is a list of how America professionalized baseball. So again, I don't want to lose sight of this. Because if you have this, that's, you know, that's what I'm asking a lot of you. If you write something down here, what people will write down here is, America charged admission for baseball. And I say, no, that's just one of your things up here. What is this, what is all this stuff? That's gonna help you come to this, okay? Okay, let's take a break until 12 after. And then we will come back and look at some more of these. And I think I will run over and see if I can find your...